Throughout history, art has been used as a tool of social change. One of the earliest examples was the work of a poet, Ku Yan, in 278 BC. He wrote poems criticizing the corruption of the Chinese government. Unfortunately, his sentiments were not too well received, and to escape punishment, he committed suicide by jumping into a lake with a large stone. During the French Revolution in the late 18th century, Jacques-Louis David created pieces like the Oath of the Tennis Court to help generate feelings of patriotism against the ruling monarchy. Pablo Picasso stood by the belief that artists should use their talents to better humanity. He demonstrated such beliefs with his famous piece entitled Guernica, about the terrible bombing in the town of the same name. In 1754, as a call to unify the American colonies, Benjamin Franklin published a print that helped shift how the colonies viewed themselves, which ultimately led to the American Revolution. During World War II, a series of paintings entitled Les Otages were created to symbolize the screams of Jews during the Holocaust. In the late 80s, Keith Haring created works to raise awareness for AIDS, a disease he died of in 1990. The Bay Area has always been a little different. I mean, California is not normal, and the Bay Area is especially not normal. And so there's a long history of free thinkers and utopians and labor activists in the Bay Area. There's some great murals from the mid-30s over in San Francisco. But the particular form of art that I'm working on a lot, which is posters, really picked up in the mid-1960s. And it really started with rock and roll posters. That the rock posters sort of developed this whole audience for people to take a poster home and put it on the wall. And it was at the same time that the civil rights movement was just ending. And there was a lot going on, a lot of anti-war activism, the beginnings of the women's movement. And so this poster movement in the Bay Area really exploded in the mid-1960s. Art has, has really followed that movement, which has stayed lively and current all the, through the history of the Bay Area. Certainly uh, strong during the 60s, but there's a very vibrant activism scene now, um, as, as there has been for all these years. What you see in the Bay Area starting in the mid-60s and just blossoming and continuing to this day, when you go to Occupy San Francisco, Occupy Oakland, people are making posters. So there's, there's been a long, steady path of organizations and individual artists making activist posters in the Bay Area, which really makes it pretty unique in the world. I mean, other places do have posters, but no place on earth has continuously produced more independent political posters in the Bay Area. And it's pretty remarkable. The Bay Area is intense. So for me, you know, I wanted to know how can I get more engaged in these things, right? I, I came of age during Prop 21, during the rise of the prison system, all these kinds of things, and nobody was talking about that where I was, right? That was kind of like dumbfounding to me. I was like, you know, why is this happening? A lot of what I wanted to do was consciousness raising and, and having these conversations with people. And so art provided that opportunity to be like, okay, I can do this in a way that's constructive as opposed to just destructive. Posters are a way of trying to encourage public discourse. It's just like writing an op-ed piece for a newspaper or sending a letter to a congressman or calling in on a radio station. It's one way for people to say, I have something to say. I don't own my own radio station. I don't own my own newspaper. Here's my getting my message out. The core quality of art is that we all have this capacity to create um, and as humans that's a distinguishing factor in terms of who we are as a species uh, and a potential that we have you know in this world increasingly we are consumers you know um, we watch TV we watch the internet we do all these kinds of things like that I mean those are basic examples but there's more and more of that right and so for me the quality of art that really makes it transformative is the ability to participate in it and engage in it and so that's why when I make art and I think of my art as being opportunities or spaces for dialogue and also opportunities or spaces for people to create things that reflect themselves or reflect their own experiences. Art reflects the society in which it was made. I think it's necessary. I think that it lets people communicate 
without communicating directly with the artist. They see it and it brings up ideas in them. They go out and either take those ideas to a friend, have a discussion, it just affects them, affects their own life. Um, it's almost like a very primitive form of social networking before there was texting and Facebook. It was, it's a way of like putting something on a wall, having people kind of check in and look at it, They're taking it away, it's very private, but it's communication, it's, it's definitely valuable. There's a million ways to express yourself artistically and culturally, and every powerful movement has integrated that. Because if you don't integrate art, you don't integrate spirit. And spirit is what moves people. So art is a tool for making that happen.